Welcome, brothers and sisters. In today's experiment, I'm going to explain the results from part one on how much nitric acid was recovered from distilling one full five-gallon bucket of copper nitrate solution from the silver cells. I'll also explain how long the process takes and discuss a couple of the issues I ran into along the way. So sit back and enjoy the video. The total amount of distillant that I collected from five gallons of copper nitrate was just over 7.5 liters. And I'm referring to this as nitric water at this point because I'm not quite sure how much nitric is in there and I know there's still quite a bit of water based on the way that I distilled it off in the last video. I wasn't as concerned as I could have been during that distillation as far as just trying to get the nitric acid to come over I was a little more concerned with just getting through the whole five gallons in kind of a reasonable amount of time. All right, now we're gonna transfer the nitric acid that uh, we've collected so far, and that's uh, got some water still in it. And we're gonna transfer that over here to this two liter boiling flask. One issue I did run into was not adding enough sulfuric acid, as you can see in the boiling flask in the front here. When heated, your boiling flask should look like the one that's up on the hot plate. So I know there's a lot of good information online about how to set up a distillation apparatus, but I wanted to run some experiments for myself. I used a glass thermometer, I used a digital thermometer. I used one condensing funnel and I used two condensing funnels. I used spiral condensers and Vigoro condensers. It's these types of acquaintance experiments that give us the experience that we all desire. Here's a great look at the moment the nitrogen dioxide starts to flow down the condenser. The first step in nitric acid formation. I noticed after about an hour of runtime, the collection beaker that collects the vented gas will start to heat up a little bit, so I'll set this in a small ice bath. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that whenever you turn off the heat to your distillation setup, be sure to vent the system so that you don't get any material backflow into your boiling flask. In part one, it took me a full week to distill all five gallons of copper nitrate. For these experiments, two distillations a day, 1850 milliliters in each distillation, and it took me three days to get through all 7.5 liters of nitric water. 
at the thermometer adapter, you want to run over 181 degrees, which is the boiling point of nitric acid, but you don't want to go over 212 degrees, which is the boiling point of water. So if you stay right about centered in that range, you'll find the best distillate will come over. I noticed the difference in using one column versus using no columns is that you gain a little bit of control over temperature. One of the issues I did run into was during the distillation process, I didn't completely boil off all of the nitric that was in the sulfuric solution. I noticed this when I caught a faint smell of nitric as I was standing near the sulfuric acid as it was boiling off the water. And I also saw some white vapors coming off, so I decided to set up a distillation and capture some of that solution. So here are the results. Thank you very much for watching and may all your days be blessed.